In the last episode of my quarterback road to glory with Keith Hayes, we started our sophomore season, but we are not off to a very hot start. We have three skill points right now, but I do want to save those up to try to get a little bit more accurate. Last season, we got to start the final two games of the year, and obviously we are two games through this year. And you can see the stat comparison. I am throwing a lot more interceptions right now, but we are also attempting a lot more passes. But our first game in today's episode is going to be in week three as we travel to California to take on the Golden Bears, who are 1-0 so far this season. Let's see how our teams stack up. And it's going to be a 79 overall against an 84 overall. On top of getting outmatched, we are apparently also in a night game, so I wonder if that's going to make the crowd just that more hype tonight. We do get the ball first, so let's go ahead and zoom out to this camera angle that I was using the entire last episode, and I honestly kind of liked it. We're going to start with a handoff right at the middle, and Taylor's going to get brought down for a one-yard carry. Coach wants to run it again on the very next play, so that's what we'll do. A draw play right at the middle, and the handoff simulator is going not well so far. Third and 11, but we finally will get a chance to throw the ball here. So let's see what we got. And apparently the stadium's not too loud because I can still see the play. I am going to hot route Square, who is Williams, on a go route just in case he can come open deep downfield. And I really like that. We're going to go ahead and let that one go. And he'll make the catch, break that tackle, and he is gone. Touchdown, Minnesota. And it does not take long to get the ball back here as the defense forces a turnover. We take over at about the 15-yard line. We'll come out to throw again, and we're going to get sacks on the opening play of this drive for a loss of seven. All right, Taylor, can you get us some of those yards back on second and 17? We'll give it to the running back who is going to get met and brought down in the backfield. A third and 20. We're going to send everybody deep and hope for the best. No one seems to be pressing, though, so I don't have a lot of faith in this play, but we'll see if anyone wants to come open. And I think Square's open again, but never mind. That safety's going to make the play and knock it away. We should at least get a field goal out of this drive. Not only do we end up with a field goal, the defense gets us the ball back again, up 10-0. We'll hand off to Taylor to start the next drive to the outside, and that's going to be a solid gain of about 10 yards. And with that carry, Taylor is back in the positives today, so a second and inches. We're going to give it right back to Taylor up the middle, and that lane actually opened up pretty nicely. He got all the way to the 42, and the handoff simulator is going to continue. I really wish they would patch this and at least allow us, I'm not saying audible every single play, but some audibles would be really nice, and Taylor's going to get swarmed in the backfield. Now, when I'm not playing Road to Glory and I'm just physically playing the game, I actually really love these jet touch toss play, whatever you want to call them, these plays. They work really good generally, and apparently it's going to work decently here as we're going to get a solid gain to set up a third and three. Now, can we keep this drive alive? We'll send 33 in motion. Take the snap, and we're going to go downfield to our tight end who will make the catch and hold on to that one. First down all the way to the 31. Another route I really love in this, I think I talked about it in the last episode, is these slot fades are really nice. Let's go ahead and do a half slide to this side just in case that guy comes on some pressure. You want to blitz that corner, be my guest. We're going to take that shot to the end zone. And I think he has his man beat, and that'll be another touchdown for Minnesota. However, we apparently missed the extra point because it's now only 16 to nothing instead of 17 to nothing. But we will come out and give it to the running back to the outside, and Taylor's going to start this drive with a 8-yard run. Another thing I really don't like is you have the extra plays that you can call, but sometimes, like right now, it called a just regular run play. There's a chance if I click the extra plays, it's just two more, like, play variations of this, and I really don't like that. I also don't like the fact that I cannot flip the play without using the extra play button, but we do get a first down that time. Now we're going to look to throw the ball again. Near the end of the first quarter, can we get the snap off before the end of the quarter? Yes, we will. We'll run the play action. And we're going to take this throw to Square, who is running open, I think. Never mind. I don't know why I thought he was open at all. Well, Coach, we already scored once on this play today. I guess why not call it again? Uh, let's half slide this side, just in case one of those, like, three guys wants to come in on a blitz here. And are they going to leave Arwen open? I believe they are. Uh, never mind. That's a foot race. And it will be a diving reception. Touchdown, Minnesota. That's touchdown pass number three of this half. That time they would manage to make the extra point, so it's 23 to nothing. We come back out, and we would start this drive with an 8-yard run from Taylor. And now we get an option play. We're going to have Hayes keep it to the outside, get the first down, and I wanted to slide, but we take a massive hit. On the next play, we would give it back to Taylor, who would get a 4-yard game, so now it's a 2nd and 6. We'll come out in shotgun. Hayes is going to drop after pass, and we had a man open deep, but we did not have enough time. 
Well, let's see if we can keep this drive alive on a third and six. We're going to take this underneath throw, but he bumped into somebody and could not get enough separation. However, we get the ball back in a very similar spot to start our next drive here at the 37-yard line. Hand off to Taylor, who's going to have a first down on the first play of the drive all the way to the 25. Now we're going to come out in pistol. It's going to be a play action. Looking to go downfield. We're going to take this throw to the end zone and a diving reception once again. Touchdown, Minnesota. And Cal would finally respond on their next drive with some points of their own. We would start this drive with an incomplete pass to make it a second and 10 under two minutes to go in the half. And why not throw this one downfield? And that's going to be caught all the way to the 49. The clock is still running. We do have all three timeouts. Out of a shotgun set, we'll drop back to pass. And under pressure, we barely get rid of that one. On second and 10, we'll take the snap and look for another pass play. We're just going to take off with Hayes this time because I saw a running lane come open and we'll end up with the first down to the 39. Once again, the clock is still running, down to about 50 seconds to go here in the first half. And once again, we're going to go to R1. He is apparently on fire today, and that corner keeps overrunning the route. Now 46 seconds to go here in the half. Hayes out of shotgun. We'll drop back, and we'll just take off up the middle again. Never mind, we get sacked and fumble the ball, and Cal will recover that one. All right, I got a little bit too careless. Following that, we do jump to the second half, where it is still 30-7 to as California got the ball first and could not do anything with it. We'll come out with an option play that Hayes will get to keep himself to the outside, and we're going to get met and brought down for a five-yard carry. You know what? Why not call back-to-back -back options? That seems like a really good idea. We'll give that one to the running back, and I read that incorrectly. Now with third down, and we're not running a halfback draw, coach. That is not what we're going to be doing. I am going to use an extra play, and we'll come out and try to find something. I don't really like that corner route. We're going to send you deep. Taylor, we're going to send you on a drag route. Got to change a lot of this play. And 39 at R1, we're going to send you deep as well, just to try to clear this space out and throw it underneath. That'll be caught, and he's not going to make it to the marker. Fourth and one. Jumping into our next drive, it is still 30-7, to seven, so the defense is still holding strong. We're going to come out on a second down and look to go deep downfield, and that's going to get picked off because we got hit as we were throwing, and it flew right to a linebacker. I was starting to think today may be the first time I don't throw an interception in this game, but apparently not. First and 10, with 25 seconds to go here in the third quarter, we're going to come out with a comeback route to the outside, and he'll make the catch for the first down. This play could end up being the final one of the third quarter on first and 10. We'll run the play action. Now we're going to R1 again, who has been open all day, and he has the first down all the way to the Cal 41. Let's see if we can just put this game away here to start the fourth quarter. It's a handoff to Taylor right up the middle. He has a great running lane and all the way to the 31 for the first down. And apparently we're just going to keep running the ball here. I really don't blame Coach at all. I really wish I could turn on chew up clock, but I'm going to have to stand here for a while until the clock runs down. Down to just the last few seconds here of the play clock. We will run a counter play to Taylor and that's going to lose a yard. Once again, letting the clock run down, but now on second and 11, we'll run a play action pass. And we're going to throw this one over the middle, and that one will be incomplete. And then I try to use extra plays to try to get a first down through the air. The only thing we have is an RPO, and I'm really not good at this RPO. Every time I've run it before, I feel like I've thrown an interception. We'll see if it comes open. I really didn't trust that, so we'll give it to Taylor, and I guess just settle for a field goal try. And from there, we jump to the end of the game, where your final score today is 33-14. to We improved to 2-1 and in the year. We had an incredible start to the game. The second half, it was kind of a slowdown, though. We finished 13 of 20 for 299 yards and four touchdowns through the air and then one interception, which is unfortunate, but, you know, with the way I play, it's going to happen all the time. Running the ball, Taylor got 85 yards, but who was our best receiver? It's a pretty obvious thing. Lonzo Glenn, 6 for 167 and three touchdowns, and then Tyler Williams caught one pass for a 74-yard score. You have one of your first big tests of the year in your marketing course coming up this week. That professor is known for difficult quizzes and tests. We can help you prepare if you'd like. I really hate these scenarios. I guess we'll study moderately, so we'll just burn two energy. I hate wasting our energies, though. However, fortunately for us, it was a bye week, so we still had four energy to burn. I already got through them. Let's go ahead and jump to the next week. Well, our test results are back, and we did pretty well, so obviously I guess we'll just try to keep that up. We now get a home game against Rutgers, who is 2-1 to start the year, but I am up to 5 skill points, so let's go ahead and go in here, get the accuracy rating that I've been wanting. We are currently a 76 overall, and we jump all the way up to a 79 overall. In this game, we are actually pretty closely matched. We're a 79 overall team, but they are only an 80 overall team, so we'll see how well we can compete. 
we do get the ball first today and we're gonna start with a read option and we're just gonna give that to taylor because i really did not like the way that looked but we'll take a four yard gain now we get a jet touch pass so we'll see how well taylor does on the outside here so we come out as the only one in the backfield now we'll send taylor in motion toss it to him and hopefully the blocking sets up he gets to the outside and is gonna set up a third and three where the handoff simulator is going to come back into play here as we will give this one to Taylor and he'll try to go to the outside but not get to the marker. So fourth and one and we will punt it away. And now we are down seven nothing to Rutgers. So this is obviously a great start to the game and we'll come out with another run play because why not? Taylor will actually get some decent yardage here and get a first down. We have finally called a normal pass play today. So we will drop back and we're going to try to go to our tight end who will make the catch for a gain of about seven yards. Oh, look at this. We get two pass plays in a row. Coach is trying to treat us right today. We'll go ahead and half slide to that side just in case that guy comes in on a blitz. And we'll drop back to the pass and go to the outside. It's going to be our tight end again who makes the catch and is going to get all the way to about the 27-yard line. We literally just ran this play like two plays ago and Coach is calling for it again. I'm calling a max protect though because it looks like they're bringing a lot of pressure they end up backing off, but I was not willing to risk that, and that's going to be caught for the first down down to the 11. But you know, we're throwing the ball, we're moving downfield, why not call back-to-back -back run plays? We got a two-yard gain on the last one, now it's a second and eight, we're going back to Taylor again, and he's going nowhere. And that is going to set up a third and nine. Hayes out of a pistol set, will drop back to pass, under pressure, we're getting sacked on the play. Awesome. We would get our field goal, but then Rutgers would respond with a touchdown to make it 14-3. We would then come out with a two-yard carry, and now we're calling the same exact pass play again. Don't really know how much I agree with that, but we'll go ahead and let this one rip down the sideline and put that way out of bounds, apparently. Now on a third and eight, and it looks like, once again, they're going to bring everybody, and I'm really not comfortable with that. So we'll go ahead and half slide to that side. I don't think they're going to bring this corner on a blitz, and they don't. We are going to go deep down the left side, though, and I got tipped that, or got tipped around, whatever, incomplete. That's the important part. Rutgers would then add to their lead on their possession to make it 17-3, kicking a field goal. We'll come out with a handoff to Taylor to go to the outside, and that looked like he had a lot more space if he had just gone inside, honestly. That will take us down to the two-minute warning, though, so it is now 17-3, facing a second and seven. We'll drop back, and a quick throw over the middle will be caught, and he can't hold on to that one. I kind of don't blame him that time. That was really a hospital pass by me, but we are going to send this guy in motion, send everybody deep, even though no one on this receiving core has any, like, you know, decent amount of speed. But Taylor is going to be pretty open, but it gets deflected away. Awesome. 37 seconds to go here in the half. We are going to draw back and look for a pass here. We'll go over the middle. That should be a completion. He's got the first down going to the outside, and he'll finally get met and brought down in Rutgers territory. We do have two timeouts, but I'm trying to not burn them just yet. So out of a shotgun set, we'll drop back to pass again. And we're going to step up in the pocket, trying to escape this pressure. We'll break that tackle and just get to the outside. All right, we get out of bounds. A four-yard play. With 18 seconds to go in the half now. We are going to send him deep downfield. So Williams will be going on a go route. We'll drop back and look to pass again. And I see a running lane open one more time. So we'll take off with Hayes, get to the outside. And we're just going to burn that timeout. Don't know if we got out of bounds or not. I have seen this game call that animation inbounds and out of bounds, so just don't take the risk, burn the timeout, 11 seconds to go here in the half, and now we're going to go downfield for Taylor, and that's double coverage, and it's tipped right into defender's hands and intercepted. And apparently this is Coach's favorite pass play in this episode because we are calling it again. I do love slot fades, but it really hasn't been working, and we're getting sacked that time. I held on to that way too long. Now a third and 22, we're not running a screen. We're going to send everybody deep and just hope for the best right now, which is really what I feel like our entire offense has been so far. Third and 22. And I think Williams beat his man off the line, so we'll lob that downfield. He'll make the catch, break that tackle. Never mind, he apparently did not catch that. They would take advantage of their next possession and make it 27-3. So now we really got to throw ourselves out of the situation, and we don't have the time. I don't know how in one game our offense just flowed so nicely against Cal and today at home it's just falling apart. But we are going to look to run and never mind we run right into the pressure because the guard lets him go right as we like take off. And see this is what I mean with the extra plays. I didn't want to run a screen so I click the extra play button and it gives me three variations of the same exact screen. It's really really pointless but on third and 17 we'll see if we can even get this screen out. 
We will press the button. He gets to the outside, makes the catch, and he's going to be met and brought down. Obviously, we will punt this one away on 4th and 12. All right, but our defense finally got another stop. So with 1.31 to go here in the third quarter, we need to score three touchdowns to get back in this game. We're going to start with a five-yard pass. Just try and run our offense and not force anything. Second and five. Run a play action again, and we're going to go downfield, down the sideline. That'll be caught, and he's forced out of the 20-yard line. See, in this situation, I really, really like the slot fade route. Mick Williams right there in the slot. We'll see if he can actually get to the outside on his guy. Actually, we'll just let this one go. See if he can make a play on it. And it's going to fall incomplete. Now a second and ten. Out of shotgun, we'll drop back. And we're going to lob this one downfield for our tight end, who cannot make the catch. And that ball almost got rifled back into several players. Now it's a third and ten. Out of shotgun again. Hayes will drop back. And we're going to fire this one over the middle, and that one's going to get intercepted. Tried to force it, obviously backfired, and yeah, our offense is not going well today. We are now in the fourth quarter, where it is still 27-3, and we need an absolute miracle. And we're not going to get it here. If you guys see receivers coming open that I'm not seeing, please let me know, because I just see no one coming open. We'll finally lob this one downfield to Square, who might win this foot race. He actually makes the catch this time. And he is going to be gone. We are finally going to find the end zone today. And we are going to go for two to try to make it a two-score game. So we'll take the snap, and there's a wide-open lane. He got leveled, but he got in. Unfortunately, though, our defense cannot get a stop at all. So they make it 30 to 11, and we'll just go to the outside for the first down, just trying to stat pad. We have a go route and a slot fade on this play. We'll see if either one is going to come open. I really didn't see it. And this guy's bringing a lot of pressure, but we break that sack to the outside and end up with a five-yard carry. Come back in shotgun for the very next play. And I think we're going to have triangle open deep downfield, or maybe not. He does not. Yeah, the, the lack of speed on this team is killing me. Third and five. Hayes back in a five-wide set. We'll drop back to pass and go to the tight end over the middle. He's got the catch and is going to get all the way to the 33. Another incomplete pass on the next play brings up a second and ten. Hayes out of shotgun. We'll drop back, and we're going to take off up the middle here. We'll go to the outside and end up with a solid 10 or 11-yard run for the first down. With 31 seconds to go out of a shotgun set, we'll drop back, and they're bringing heavy pressure. We barely get rid of it, and apparently we're going to go for it on fourth and ten. You know what? Down by 19, why not? We are just stat padding here. Probably our final play of the game. We'll drop back. And go to the end zone. Never mind, there is a flag, but we're going to get picked off anyway. And I think it's going to be a holding call, so that's going to stand on our stat sheet. Awesome. Well, we had one really good game and then a really, really bad game. And I mean really bad. I don't know if you can get any worse than what we just played like. The final stats on the day, 11 of 27 for 242 yards, one touchdown, and three total interceptions. And it looks like week six is another bye week for us, so I went ahead and took care of everything already, and now we can just jump right into week seven. But I really, really don't want to end the episode off on a game like that, so let's go ahead and do another one today as we have another home game, but this time it's against Purdue. Before we actually jump into the game, one, you can see all of the ratings here, so you can see it's another 80 overall team. That went so well for us last time, but I was really curious as to what playbook we were running, I don't know why, but we are currently running Florida's offensive playbook. That's not exactly who I thought I'd be running here at Minnesota. So I honestly kind of assume our coach was fired and the replacement runs Florida's playbook, which would probably be the only reason why that would be a thing right now. But that's our coach's playbook, and that's exactly what we will run. So we come out with a run play here to open the game to Taylor, who goes to the outside, and he's got the first down and is brought down to the 48. In case you had not noticed yet, we did not get the ball first. Purdue got downfield and got a field goal, so we are already down 3 0 to start today. I want to start with a quick throw downfield for us, and that's going to be caught by 39 for the first down, all the way to the 39 yard line of Purdue. All right, now we get a shotgun set. So we'll come out, and it looks like Hayes is going to get to keep it on a read option this time, and he's going to get met and brought down for just a couple yards. Now it is time for a five wide set, apparently. We'll drop back, and that running lane came open, so we'll just go ahead and take that. Hayes has the first down all the way near the 20. I tried to slide, but he is brought down at the 20-yard line. Another shotgun set for us. We'll take the snap. Everyone going to throw this one towards the sideline. That'll be caught and into the end zone. I did not think he was actually going to score, but touchdown, Minnesota. First and 10, now with a pistol set. We'll come out with a play action. Looking to go downfield. Not seeing anyone come open. We'll just throw that one away, but there is a flag. Don't tell me that was intentional grounding. 
Really, is that what we're calling? That's exactly what we're calling. Well, that is absolutely brutal for us. Now a second and 23. We'll come out with a play action, and we gotta escape this pressure. It was back there immediately. There was nothing I could have done. I mean, there was nothing I could have done after the fact that I got the intentional grounding. Without that, we obviously wouldn't have been in that situation. But either way, now down 12 to 7 here late in the first quarter. We'll come out with a pass play and take this one to our tight end, who's going to cut up field and get the first down to the 41. Now a second and nine. Hayes out of shotgun. We'll drop back to pass again. And we're just going to step up in the pocket and try to run, but we get sacked on the play to make it a third and 12 as we head into the second quarter. Hayes comes out in shotgun this time. We'll take the snap and drop back to pass. We got to buy some time again. And we actually managed to escape the pressure for a second. We need to break that tackle and then finally get rid of this deep downfield. And we managed to find our guy for the first. That was the best play I have done the entire series. That is going to set up a run play on the very next play, though. As we hand this one to Taylor off an RPO to the outside. He's got another first down for us. This one all the way to the 25. You know what? How about another stretch run play out of a pistol set? We'll give it to Taylor again. He follows the blocks to the outside and ends up with an eight yard carry. Now in a second and two, Hayes out of shotgun. We'll take the step. Oh, I read that one wrong. And we get absolutely murdered for it. We only need two yards for a first down to keep the drive moving. We'll send a man in motion and a quick throw to the tight end is going to get intercepted. Are you kidding me? They were able to jump that and then we missed the tackle. Our defense is able to hold them without getting any points, so it is still 12 to 7 when we come out. Near the two minute warning here to at the end of the first half as we lob this one downfield and find our man all the way to the 24. That should take us down to the two minute warning. Now it is time for Coach's favorite pass play of the day. So we're going to send Glenn on a slot fade and hope he comes open, but I don't see him coming open, so we'll throw it to circle and just get a four yard gain. Now a pistol set here on second and six. We'll take the snap. Another quick throw. This one's going to be a comeback route. He makes the catch and sets us up inside the five. Now, this is where I really need to be careful, and I am generally really bad at committing turnovers. Out of a shotgun set, we'll roll out to the outside. Can we just get into the end zone with Hayes? It's going to be a close call, and no, he won't get there. I will just call this RPO, though. And it looks like Triangle is the possible pass here. We'll get rid of this one. He makes the catch and dives into the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. We take the lead. But, oh my god, we are apparently at a severe risk of injury. We have minus 6 speed. Actually, way more than that. We have minus 13 speed because our right ankle and our right leg is both injured. Uh, medium accuracy is minus 12. Throw power is minus 9. Coach, we may need to come out of the game for a minute. However, that is not what Coach is going to do. We apparently are just going to send us back out to throw the ball as far as we can. So, Hayes out of shotgun. And we're going to throw this one deep to the left side. I did not see that safety coming, and luckily that fell incomplete. So a second and ten out of a pistol set. We're going to drive back to pass again. And once again, we're going to launch this one deep downfield. I think he has a step, and okay, no one even got a hand on that one. I want to see if this was just really inaccurate, if just no one could get a hand on it. All right, I guess they got close. It went right between both of them. But either way, it sets up a third and ten. Now with a five wide set. We'll drop back and go to R1 on the outside. And he made a diving attempt to knock that one away, but missed it, so we get the first down. And once again, it's time for this pass play. So we're going to look to see if R1 wants to come open. And he is pretty open, but I lob that way too much, and thankfully they just knock it out of the air. Now 50 seconds to go in the half. We'll drop back out of pistol and take that comeback route again. They are not defending that at all today as we get all the way to the 25. A quick 7-yard pass to the tight end on the very next play sets up a second and three. Now we're going to send a man in motion. Everybody's going downfield. But we're going to take this one to our running back wide open and he gets into the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. So we have a 20-12 to 12 lead here as we start the second half with a handoff to Taylor who makes one man miss and will begin this half with a five-yard carry. Coach wanted to call a wide receiver screen. I was really not feeling that if I'm being completely honest. We are going to call a pass protection here though. I don't always do that, but I probably should. But either way, Coach wanted to call a wide receiver screen. I wasn't really feeling it, so now we get his favorite pass play again. So we'll see if R1's going to come open. Actually, we'll just launch this and hope for the best. Please don't get picked off. That's exactly what's going to happen. I don't know why I expected anything else to happen there, but now they're going to have a chance to tie this game. But they do not take advantage of that opportunity. We get the ball back. It is still 20-12, to and now we'll hand off to Taylor, who has a first down on the first play of their drive. No, he gets a 10-yard gain to set up a play-action shot play. Okay, we'll see if anyone come open or if anyone's going to come open on this. 
Out of a pistol set, we'll drop back, and I see someone open. We get rid of it, and he makes the catch for the first down. That is Glenn all the way to the 34. You gotta love when plays like that actually turn out well. On the next play, we'd get a three-yard run from Taylor. So on second and seven, we go back to Taylor, and this time he's gonna end up with the first down all the way down to the 19. 3-0-1 to go here in the third quarter. We'll take the snap, run the play action. We're gonna launch this to the corner for that receiver, and he's gonna make the catch. Touchdown to Williams. That would make it 27 to 12, and now we get to come out. That is still the score, and we're immediately calling this pass play. Eventually, they're going to catch on and just know how to shut it down immediately. Well, I mean, they've already picked it off once, but we'll launch it deep. I don't think he's going to make it there in time, and he makes the catch. Touchdown, Minnesota. I believe that's touchdown pass number five today. All right, coach, you cannot be serious. At first, it was funny. Now, this is just a little bit ridiculous. I don't think this is the same exact play because on some of them, Williams is like running a comeback. But this one, he's running a go route, so I guess we'll see what happens this time. We're going to drop back, and we're going to be under a lot of pressure. Roll to the outside, and we're just going to take off with Hayes and get forced out of bounds. Now in a pistol set. We'll take the snap and drop back to the pass again, and we're going to launch this one downfield. All right, that did not have the throw power. I guess I'm, you know, not calculating for the fact that we have lost a lot of throw power here, but that one gets picked off. Awesome. Thankfully, the defense gets a stop and does not allow them back into this game. So we'll come out on the next drive and a spin move from Keith Hayes that's going to get us murdered in the backfield. We are now going to come out in a five wide set for the next play. We'll drop back to the pass and we're going to try to run. Never mind, we get swarmed and brought down third and 20. Letting the clock run down quite a bit just so we can chew away at some of the clock in this game. We'll go and send our man in motion. We're sending everybody deep and hoping for the best and that's going to get picked off. Never mind, just gets deflected away. I'll take that, I guess. However, when we get the ball back, it is first and goal from the six-yard line. So we're going to hand this one to Taylor, who makes a man miss, and will be brought down inside the five. Letting the clock run down before the next play on a second and goal. It will be an option play that Hayes gets to keep himself, and now we are not going to get into the end zone. I thought we stood a chance, but that will take us down to the two-minute warning. Now with a third and goal from the two-yard line. Let's just give this to the running back, see if he can find his way into the end zone, and he definitely will. Touchdown, Minnesota. But that will set up our final score today of 41-15. to I am much happier leaving the episode off on this note rather than what I felt like after the last game when we got completely destroyed by Rutgers. Obviously, I need to cut down on the interceptions, but a 16-23 of day for 285 yards and 5 touchdowns is still a pretty solid performance. On the ground, the running back got 71 yards and a score, but our best receiver is going to be Lonzo Glenn again. 6 for 172 and a score. McWilliams got a touchdown. Simpson got a touchdown. Taylor got a touchdown. And Williams got a touchdown. So we threw a touchdown to five different guys. And to cap off this episode, we get our midterm results back because that's why we play Road to Glory. And we ended up with straight Bs. In our next episode, we will jump into week eight of our sophomore season as we take on the three and two Iowa Hawkeyes. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one and I will talk to you next time.